If you have ever programmed enemy logic, you know it is not that simple, especially when the enemies have multiple states they can be in. This can often result in messy code that is hard to extend and modify. And this is exactly what the state pattern will help you with. Using it you can handle tons of states efficiently while keeping your code readable, modifiable and extensible. My scene setup is fairly simple and all of the files will be for download on my Patreon so you can check it out. What I have here is just a player and three enemies and the goal of this video is to make these three enemies wander around. If the player comes close to them, the enemies should follow the player and if they get even closer they should start shooting. This is the case when I probably use the state pattern the most, which is just for enemies, but it can really be used for any other object that has multiple states. In short, state pattern is a behavior design pattern that allows an object to change its behavior when its internal state changes. So for the enemies, when they get too close to the player, they will start moving in the direction towards the player. If they get even closer, they will start shooting. So this is all of the changing of the behavior. And the key idea of the state pattern is that the states are represented as separate classes. So then the object delegates the behavior to the current state class which handles how to respond to the method call. This is the main reason why the state pattern will make your code easier to maintain and extend. Another term that sounds quite fancy but is actually really simple is the state machine which contains multiple states where each one of them can have different logic. The object can be only in one state at a time and to get into a particular state there are also transitions between these states and each state can have different amount of states to transition to. Typically every state does not transition into every other state. The state machine can be achieved using the state pattern. Another term that is often thrown around is the finite state machine, which is just a state machine that has a limited or predefined number of states. So what you'll be creating here for the enemies will be a finite state machine and we'll create it using the state pattern. To understand the pattern we should take a look at the diagram. So the first element in the diagram is a state which is an interface or abstract class that is common for all of the states. In our case that could be enemy state. Then we have the concrete states, which will be classes implementing the state interface. They provide their own implementation specific to each state and can also transition to other states. So we'll have wander state, follow state, attack state and so on. The third piece, which is kind of the manager of these states, is a context, which is a class storing a reference to the current state object with which it interacts through the interface. It calls the state methods on it, so the concrete states perform the work. And the last piece of the state pattern which some people use and some people don't, in this case I won't be using it, is the client, which is the class which communicates with the context object, but doesn't interact with the state objects directly. So in my case I will kind of combine the client and the context into one piece. I will start with the enemy AI script which will be the context placed on each of the enemies which will be managing these states. This is going to stay a mono behavior and so that we can use some of these states let's now create the I enemy state interface. This interface will be the interface common for all of these states. Inside of it you can put really as many functions as you would like. In my case I will have just a function enter state and function update state but you could also have let's say exit state or if you want to do something with collisions or with triggers you could also have these corresponding functions. What you will also typically see is that when calling some function in the concrete states you are also passing in the reference to the context so that later if you need to retrieve some information from it or just call some functions you can do it quite simply. In my case I'm passing in the context just when he entered the state because I think that there is no need to be passing the context on update. Let's now get back to the enemy AI script where I have added a variable storing the current state. In update we are just calling the function update state and we also have a function set state into which we can just pass the state to which we want to set it and then we are calling the function enter state. Most of this stuff is optional because you can use the state pattern in multiple different ways, this is really the most barebone setup. Next we'll create the concrete states 
so I'll create the Wanderer, Follow and the Attack state. All of these are separate classes, which are implementing the iEnemy state interface, so I needed to add the Enter state and the Update state functions, and in all of them I'm just setting the enemy AI into a variable, so that later if we want we can get some public functions and some variables from it. Later we are going to provide some actual implementation for the enter state and the update functions of all of these classes, but because this approach is object oriented, so we are using those different classes, we should also create instances of them, which will be happening inside of the context, so it is the enemy AI script. The way I am handling all of the instances of these different states is a bit ugly right now, because for each new state you are going to need to add new variable and also create the object, but this is just what happens when you need to create instances of all of these classes. To make it a bit more flexible and less annoying, you could create a factory method, inside of which you could also use a bit of reflection, so that when you call let's say the update state, you could require some state from the factory and using the reflection it would just go through all of these states and choose the type that you have required from it so then you would not really need to worry about instance of each of these states but I think this is a topic for another video so like this if you have let's say 5 or 7 states it's definitely going to work well. Additionally if you need to pass something to the constructor of each of these states Doing it this way is a lot simpler than doing it through the factory. But each approach has its pros and cons. And that's really it for the basic structure. So we have the iEnemy state interface containing those functions. Then we have those concrete states into which we will provide some actual implementation soon. And then we have the context which is just handling all of these states. It is initializing them. On start I am also setting some initial state. And on update we are just updating the state. I provided some real implementation to each of the classes, so now the enemies work as they should, they are rotating towards the player, they are following me, and I think that I have one more enemy that's somewhere in the back that right now is not following me, this one is just wandering around, and yep, yeah, these enemies are shooting at me if they are close, if they are not, they are trying to follow me, and yeah, that's it. This is really nothing fancy, but the main thing with the state pattern is that now I can quite easily expand the enemies. If I want to add more states, it should be really as simple as creating new script and putting the logic into it. I will now quickly walk you through how I implemented it. So back in the enemy AI, I have just few variables for the move speed, the follow range, the attack cooldown, the bullet prefab and so on. When initializing, that's really the same as it was, just initializing each of the states and some other stuff. Then we have the start, which stayed the same, update, that's the same as well, set state, and then I just have some additional functions, which I'm then using in each of these states, because as you remember, when we enter the state, I'm passing in reference to this, so then we can use really any of the public functions and variables. You can see that I'm passing all of the variables that I need through the constructors, which is a viable option, but if you see that multiple of these states really need the same variable or the same value, uh, you can also make it public here and then just access it from the reference to this class. In my case, I didn't want to make all of this public, so I'm using the constructors instead, but what could also work maybe even better would be some dependency injection framework, such as Xtenject, about which I also made a tutorial, so you can watch it. Let's go into the follow enemy state, so here, Again, we have just a few variables, which I'm then setting in the constructor. When we enter the state, really not much is happening. When we are updating it, we are just checking whether we should transition into some other state. Either we continue following, or if the distance is greater than the follow range, I'm just setting the state to the wonder state, otherwise I'm setting it to the attack state. So this is where you can transition into different states. And obviously each state does not have to transition into every other state. So from the follow state I could definitely transition let's say only into the attack state. In this case it doesn't really make sense. But you can really make it however you want. Then as I'm following, just running these functions on the enemy AI, pretty straightforward. When attacking, again we have a bunch of variables we need, we are setting them in the constructor. And in the update state, that's really the same thing, just checking 
whether we should stay in this state. If we should, I'm running the attack function. And if we should transition, in this case, we are transitioning just into the follow state and not into the wander state because it doesn't really make sense in this case. When attacking, just some simple timer spawning the bullets. That's it. For the wander state, really the same stuff. We have some variables. We are setting in the constructor just one of them. And if you find yourself creating too many variables that you need to set for each of these states that are really specific just to one state, then you should definitely consider making these states scriptable objects because that could make it really easy for you that you could just set all of the values directly in the inspector. So let's get to the update state function again, checking if we should transition into some other states. In this case, we are transitioning just into one state and then the wonder function itself and choosing the random wonder position. And that's it. So now we know how we can use the finite state machine in our games, let's say for the enemies, for the player, but also for really any other object that should have multiple states. As I said, there are tons of different ways you can implement the finite state machine, so feel free to come up with your own solution. This is just a general structure of how you can do it, but the design patterns are not really a pre-made code that you have to use, it is a structure at which you can look, you can use some part of it, and you can adjust another part of the code. If you want to take a look at some of the extra content I make, you can take a look at my Patreon, where soon I also plan to be releasing more videos about design patterns, where I'm not only going to be teaching you about one particular design pattern, but where I will be combining multiple of them into one project, so you can see how we can use multiple of the design patterns in real scenario. I also plan to be making a Udemy course, where I will be teaching about all of the design patterns and making few bigger projects with them, but it's going to take me a bit more time. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down in the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos, bye!